let's see the nested functions in javascript so in nested function the function definition and the declaration including the call of the function we keep in another function so that is called a nested function we'll quickly see an example of it and we'll also try to understand what the scope plays a role here and how the variables we can use interchangeably or can we use the variables from another function which is not in the current scope and we'll try a few examples with this. So let's start with the code here. Let me write a function here. For example, this function is responsible to perform an algorithm operation. So I'll give a name for this function called algo. And here I'll just call, uh, I'll just console log mentioning algo function called. Okay. And let me call this and complete a normal behavior and let me verify everything is good. Yes. And now what I will do, I need to implement some more small part of my algorithm. Let's say this is a thousand lines of code in the algorithm function here in this function. So of course we need to again divide it in uh, divide uh, in another function where we need to implement some separate logic. So generally we used to create a different function like this over here and we'll do the required stuff. But in this case, what we will try to do, we'll try to create a nested function inside algo function here. So what I'll do, I'll just remove this from here and I'll paste it here. So very first thing when I'm calling the algo, let's see what is the output I'm getting. So my question to you people, will I be able to see the in my console this line? The small part is called will this function will get executed i'll just take a pause here so that you can think on it yes so let's take uh, take a look at the output so only the algorithm is getting called this one not the function which is present with the name small part here because this is just a function definition we are not calling it so let's call this function from over here small part sounds good now firstly this line will get executed now th th this will not get executed because the call is needed next when it is coming on the line number nine the call is present and now the execution will happen for the line number six now we should be able to see both the console when we are calling our algorithm function yes we are able to do that let's see we again need this small part to be re-executed due to some logical requirement of our business logic so can we do that yes it's a normal function we can call it any number of time as per our need yes it's possible now let's try to call the small small part function over here after and i'll just comment out the functionality the call which is present earlier so right now i'm calling the algorithm function which is executing this line and there will be no execution for this because no call is present and from here i'm trying to call the function small part so i'll just take a pause here and my question to you guys will be this will, will this function be able to call and uh, will be able to see the console or will get any error in this case yes so let's see in the console what's happening so very clearly the algorithm function got called from here but for the small part function there is some problem here the reference error small part is not defined it is saying so on the global scope we are on the global scope here this is a local scope this is a global scope so inside the global scope there is no function present so with this what we have learned if we are defining declaring any function we can just use that inside the current scope or maybe the nested scope we cannot use it on an upper scope so right now this is present inside a local scope of the algo function the small part function it means i can make use i can call the smart uh, small part function inside the current scope over here only Otherwise, I can also create one more nested scope here and I can also call there as well. For example, I'm just creating some more nested scope here. So there also I can make a call for my small part. Let's verify that. Yes, I can do that. 
So wherever your function is declared and defined, you can uh, use it in the same scope or maybe the inside scope, but you cannot go outside of the scope. So this is what we have learned here. Let's try few more variations here. So what I'll do, I'll just create a variable called a equals to 10. Okay, so we have defined a equals to 10. Of course, we can make use of that variable over here called log a. Let's see the output. outcome. Yes, we'll able to get the number 10 here on the line number 5. That's perfect. Now, can I use that over here? That's my question. If I just console a here, so I'll take a pause here so that you can think what will happen on line number 9. We will be able to print 10 or we'll get any error. Yes, let's see the output. We are getting it. And why? Because whenever you are creating any variable, this is being declared by using a let. It means it is available in the current scope and all the nested scope inside it. It will not be available outside of the current scope, the same way we have seen for the function as well. So this let is available here as well as it will be also available over here inside the nested scope. Even if I create few more scopes here and I just console A, I'll be able to access that because we are inside the current scope where the A is declared. Yes, we are able to see that. That is line number 14 over here. Let me remove this complication and uh, now let me write A equals to 20 here. What will happen in this case? We will get any error or declaring the same variable or with the name A is allowed. So let's see the output. Very first thing, we are not getting any error. But what is happening on the line number 10? On this particular line number 10, we are getting 20. It means we are using this A declaration, not the A declaration, which is present in the upper scope. So whenever you are making use of variable, it will try to figure out the nearest available declaration for that variable. So if I am using a variable A, which is the nearest declaration available to me, that is line number 8. If I am not having the line number 8 over here, which is the nearest variable declaration available for me, that is this one, line number 3. So in this case, I will get the 10. Let's see. Yes. Now, the next thing. Here, I will create one more. Let B equals to 20. Of course, I can do a console here and see what's happening in the B. So, it will print 20. That's super simple thing. Okay. But now, again, what I'll do, I'll remove this from here and I'll put it over here. Is it allowed? No. Because again, when you're declaring a variable A, it is allowed in the current scope or maybe the nested scope, which is inside your current scope like this. It is not allowed outside of the current scope. So definitely we are going to have some error here in the browser. B is not defined at algo function on line number 12 it is saying. So it is not able to figure out where exactly this B is available. So this is how when you write a function inside a function, you need to take care about the variable scopes and where it is allowed, where it is not allowed, including for your function as well what is your uh, scope available so that you can call it uh, and there are variety of options available for the nesting of the function in JavaScript that we will see in the upcoming lectures as well.